Hey everybody, my name is Ed Trevers. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I'm an Anglican priest in the Diocese of Nova Scotia in Prince Edward Island. I get to serve in the amazing parish of Christ Church Shelburne in the beautiful town of Shelburne, Nova Scotia that sits on the ancestral and on the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. I give thanks to God for you all every day. I thank God for the things that you teach me and share with me in the comments and in your emails. I thank God for the time that you spend with me and I thank God for your prayers that you offer on my behalf. And if you're wondering if I did that on purpose because some of you have got this memorized, yes, I did. Did it throw you off just a little bit? Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the collect of the day and dissecting it a little bit. So let's pray. Almighty God, Give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So the piece in this that we're looking at is the ask of God, give us everything that we need to cast off the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light. It sounds really poetic, but what does it mean? Well, first of all, it comes from um, Paul's letter to the Romans, the 13th chapter, the 12th verse, which says exactly that. It's time to cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. But what does it mean when we say, well, what's, what's the works of darkness? Well, the works of darkness are, in Paul's words, you know, the things of the flesh. The stuff that gives us instant, immediate self-gratification in this particular moment. Uh, the things that begin and end with us. The things that are all about us, despite the fact that it may cost other people. It's our sin. The things that keep us disconnected from God or the things that keep us disconnected from our neighbors. So what then does it mean to put on the armor of light? A week ago, um, I did a sermon about uh, Jesus' words where he says, whatever you've done for the least of these, you've done for me. Whatever you haven't done for the least of these, you haven't done for me. It's a passage in Matthew, and in it, he gives us a pretty good understanding of exactly what he means. You know, to feed the hungry, to, to give drink to the thirsty, to provide shelter for the homeless, to give clothes and, 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 and supplies to those in need, to visit the sick and to visit those in prison. In other places, he tells us, take care of the widows and the orphans. Love one another as I have loved you. Love each other as you would love yourself. He's not real cryptic when it comes to how we should live this life as human beings and how, especially in regards to how we should treat God and how we should treat other people. Putting on the armor of light means to take on, take on that role, to take on those responsibilities, to take on those duties and to practice them. And it's essential to treat it as practice. I mean, we, we're not perfect. Not one of us is perfect. And, and so when I say we should do that stuff, I mean we should practice doing that stuff because sometimes we're going to fail. Sometimes we're not going to achieve what we wanted to achieve. Sometimes we're just not even going to try. Maybe we forget or maybe we just don't want to. But we need to practice. Because the more we practice doing those things, the more we practice putting on the armor of light, the less likely we are to do the works of darkness. A couple of years ago, um, so, as some of you may know, a couple of years ago, I decided that I was going to start sailing competitively with my laser. And, um, you know, and yes, I do. I, I, I take up the back of just about every fleet that I've been in. But I decided that I, I wanted to use that as my reason to get back in shape. And, um, and I realized that there were certain things that I had to stop doing. So I had to stop eating junk food. I had to stop taking afternoon naps and being quite lazy. I needed to stop watching so much TV and playing video games. Um, I needed to start spending more time reading. I needed to sp start spending more time working out and, and, and exercising and just being active in general. 
I needed to start eating better. But for the life of me, I could not stop doing those things that I hated so much. I could not stop doing those things that I had identified as being detrimental to the person I wanted to be. I did some research and I found some vloggers who, who specialized in this kind of thing and, and pretty much the consensus of them was if you want to break a bad habit, replace it with a good one and really focus, it, really focus on that good one. And so what I did was as a journaler, I, 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 I journal, I, I put in my weekly schedule all the things that I wanted to do, including like not just eat better, but eat chicken, eat broccoli, eat fish, eat beans, eat lentils, eat, you know, salad, eat all this healthy stuff, fruit, vegetables, whatever. But eat, even, I even broke it down to that. And what I noticed was, especially with that as the example, I noticed that by the time evening came along, I didn't have any room in my stomach for the chips or the ice cream or the cookies. I had filled up on all the good stuff because as you know, Whole foods, healthy foods, have a way of filling us up that, that junk food doesn't. As I focused on doing the things that I wanted to do, the things that I didn't want to do anymore, they fell away. I didn't, it wasn't really a conscious decision at that point. It wasn't really conscious action. I mean, don't get me wrong, there were still cravings, but it, for the most part, those... Those behaviors that I wanted to be rid of simply fell away. It's the same for putting on the armor of light. We know who we want to be. We, we know what we want to stand for. We know what it is we hope to help accomplish in the world. But we also know there's things getting in the way. And so I would urge you, with God's help, focus on doing the things you know to be righteous. Focus on doing the things you know are, are going to be beneficial to your community, to your health, right? To your family. And that other stuff, the works of darkness, it will drop off. Let's pray it again. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility, that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and may you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray that as we grow, we will take on the practice of putting on the armor of light so that those works of darkness we're not so fond of will simply pass away. Amen.